Lost Planet 2. How can it still be lost if this is the sequel? So, let me tell you what this game reminds me of, and hear me out, because you probably aren't expecting this. No, it's not Cosmic Carnage mixed with Barbie Horse Adventures, although that would be awesome. No, this reminds me of Halo 3 mixed with Left 4 Dead. This is the sequel to the first Lost Planet, one of Capcom's flagship series. And I thought the first one was a really fun game, and somewhat mysterious when you start playing it, because it's called Lost Planet, are you exploring a lost planet? Everything from the packaging artwork to the storyline was somewhat suspenseful. The action was really nothing new per se, but the game had a unique style, which revolved around the title Lost Planet, the title that fit the game. So it avoided the stigma of being just another shooter taking place in a burned out urban environment or jungle. It was Lost Planet. But we need a sequel. Lost Planet 2. This one's made for multiplayer. I think they should have called it Lost Planet 2. It was under the couch the whole time. They took the Halo path. Not that that's the wrong path to take, because the first Halo was the only Halo that had a great storyline that matched the title of the game and backed it up with solid single-player campaign gameplay. Halo has since gone on to be one of the best multiplayer series, in my opinion, and it's quite popular. That's the direction that Lost Planet 2 went. Multiplayer. While this game has standard multiplayer and it has a campaign mode, what they've done is make the campaign mode more like Left 4 Dead. And that you don't need to play it with your friends, but you really should. Because if you don't play it with other people, with other human beings, you're going to be missing about 75% of the gameplay. So that's the thing to keep in mind with Lost Planet 2. Because technically the game is solid, although I do have some serious problems with the camera perspective at times when you back into a wall. Other, other than that, they even tell you repeatedly during the menus, cooperation is key. But what they don't tell you is that cooperation is key if you're playing with other human teammates. Because if you're playing with the AI computer controlled teammates, forget it. You will be taking on all of the enemies by yourself while they're sitting in the corner picking their nose. Through some sort of gargantuan, overly elaborate helmet. In fact, I don't even know how they get their finger up there. They do nothing. They've given you the stupidest computer-controlled teammates in existence. They couldn't have programmed them to be any dumber if they tried. To enjoy this game to its full extent, you have to play with other people. And I, I just can't get over this fact, because the game is so well made. It's like they intentionally made your AI teammates dumb. Just to get you to play this game with your friends, or with other humans. Even if they're not your friends. Even if they're people you don't like, you'll still have a better time playing this game with them than the computer-controlled teammates. The robots from the first level of Berserk on Atari 2600 are smarter than the AI teammates in this game. At least they know what to shoot at. You. Like, you won't be surprised in this game if you're taking on some Category G acreage, you're struggling, you need some support, you look behind you and you find your teammate just staring at the wall, counting bricks. Maybe they're watching Classic Game Room on their iPod. I don't know. Whatever they're doing, they're not helping you. So, does this mean the game is bad? No, far from it. It's just made for cooperative multiplayer during the campaign. And that's when the game works the best, because you need cooperation to take down some of these giant Clash G acreids, or to wipe out these enemy encampments. It's a lot of fun, and the game just feels alive when you play it correctly. It's actually pretty challenging, and occasionally in this review I'm playing with another human being, I jumped into their game, or they jumped into mine. And it makes all the difference. Even playing with two people in a team of four, two humans, in a four-person team, makes the game play correctly. You need some teamwork to enjoy the game to its fullest. And then you can really plow through waves of enemies and some end bosses that are just ridiculously hard to bring down at times. So it's like Left 4 Dead, but without the waves of zombies, you have these giant, Godzilla-sized Class G acres. <laughs> It's hard to put a finger on it, but stylistically the game is just pretty slick. The art design, the level design, the helmet design, and the environments, along with uh, some serious replay ability, make Lost Planet 2 a slightly unique game in an oversaturated genre. 
If you have any questions about whether or not you'd like it, rent it. Because I can't tell you if you'd like it or not. Personally, I prefer a single player campaign where you don't have to rely on teammates. Other people like to play with teamwork. That's Lost Planet 2.